everybody, this is Rob Goolsby with Northwest Bus Sales. Today we're going to show you something unique. This is our first one of these. This is an E450 Metrolink shuttle bus with an all-electric power plant. They're getting very popular nowadays and this is the first one we've received on our lot. I'm going to show it to you guys. Let's go take a look. Again, Metrolink is the body manufacturer for this current bus. We had the bus built and then it was driven to Colorado, a place called Lightning Electric puts in the modification. They take out the whole gasoline power plant engine and transmission and then they fill it with an electric power plant. Um, one of the first things you'll see on the outside of this bus is underneath the skirt. What this is, is one of three batteries and they are quite large. They're approximately four and a half feet long by two feet wide and there's two of those power there's two of those power packs on the vehicle and then there's a third one underneath the center frame rails that together combined make a 129 kilowatt hour battery system what that's equivalent to is about a 110 mile range you can go with this thing without plugging it back in come on inside as you can see here this metrolink we got gray floors Underneath this step tread right here is two regular 12 volt batteries like you'd have in a car. That powers this, the, the standard equipment on the vehicle, which consists of the electrical panel and all the interior lights, the wheelchair lift, everything that is run off 12 volt on the standard vehicle is ran off 12 volt in this. Um, you'll see this vehicle has uh, tw uh, 12 seats here with armrests and uh, hand, hand holds along with recliners and you'll see it has a double fold away in the back so this vehicle is a non-cdl vehicle 14 passengers or it's a 12 with two wheelchairs difference in an electric bus over a gasoline bus is that the air conditioners are all electric they're not uh, run off uh, ac pumps like a standard engine is when the engine turns the pump runs there's an electric ac unit and there's also an electric heater in it. Now I'll go into more details on how the heater works when we go underneath the hood and or I sit in the uh, uh, driver's seat and show you guys. Wheelchair lifts the same on this. It's a standard brawn lift. This is a uh, 800 pound lift. We have all LED lighting throughout the vehicle. We have the ADA grab rails. We have a partition here, a modesty panel to prevent anyone from tripping into the wheelchair lift, which is a nice option. And we have a standy line here. So no one stands in front of the line when the vehicle's moving. We have a driver's sneeze shield here, safety shield. And we have a front overhead compartment in this bus. And in this wooden box right here is a destination sign. This one's going to a transit agency, so they have a destination sign with a controller here. This is made by Twin Vision. This is the wheelchair control module here, and this is a battery shutoff switch, which is used on gasoline vehicles. But when you're using a battery powered vehicle, you don't really have to use it. So it's just there. Now I'll get in the cockpit here and I will show you guys some of the features of this vehicle. Okay, so when you sit in the driver's cockpit here, it looks just like you're in a regular gas powered shuttle. There's a few differences on the gauge cluster here. Instead of a tachometer, you're gonna have a uh, power meter which shows you a red and a green line and a center. So basically when the vehicle, you hit the gas pedal, it goes into the red because you're taking battery away and it has what's called a regenerative braking system. So when you let off the gas, it actually grabs that energy and, and applies it back to the battery. So it's kind of recharging those batteries a little bit for efficiency. So when, you're, when you let off the gas, it goes into the green side. So it tells you if you're gaining energy or if you're burning energy. Uh, there's a gauge up here on the top that used to be a fuel gauge on the Ford OEM. It now says Lightning Systems with a battery meter on it. So it goes from 0 to 100%, which obviously tells you how much battery you have left in the vehicle and how much range. Um, down here in the right-hand corner of the cluster, you have a, a battery meter for the house batteries that I showed you underneath the steps. It tells you if those things are working properly and if they still have charge. And then down here, you're going to have the uh, controls here for the air conditioner and the fans for uh, heat and defrost. Um, difference in this vehicle versus a gas powered rig is you don't have a water pump on the engine circulating water through everything. But the batteries on this are liquid cooled 
and they have a liquid cooled water pump that pulls a liquid out of the radiator and runs it through the batteries to keep them cool. That warm water is recaptured and utilized for dash defrosting and also for the rear heat. So if you need heat in this thing, you just push this little button right here and you turn your fans on and there you go. You now have heat. But the standard OEM dash uh, heat is the same as it was if it was a gas powered rig. So, so it still uses the same OEM fans for the heat and AC on the dash. Um, you got a green light over here and this tells you that the vehicle is fully functional and it's running. So right now the vehicle is running. Even though you can't hear it, it's running. And uh, Jack, you can take a look at this. This will show you the main control module right here. This is the panel that you see, the driver sees when he's driving. So it tells him what the range is and you'll see this little bar graph right here. This is telling them how many miles per kilowatt hour they are getting while they're driving. So right now he's getting less than one mile per kilowatt hour. Again, this is a 129 kilowatt hour battery system. So if you're not getting one mile per kilowatt hour, it looks like he's getting about half. Right now he'd probably be getting about 62 or 65 miles out of the uh, battery. but. As you drive and as the regenerative braking system starts working, you recapture energy and that, that bar graph will actually go up over one at times or it'll usually stay right about one or a little less. Um, right down here on the dash, underneath the dash, this is usually hidden, but and I took it out here so you guys can see. This is for you to plug into the machine for the service guys at Lightning to plug into it and check if things are working properly or they can do firmware updates to the software that runs this vehicle. So they use this in the case that they have to do an update or something like that. Other than that, standard stuff that you see in a, in a wheel, in a, in a small cutaway, you got the, uh, you got the, um, you got the backup camera built into the mirror right there. You got your 16 inch mirror here to see the passengers. Um, and other than that, I'll take you underneath the engine compartment here and I'll show you what it looks like under there. As you can see underneath this hood compartment, it doesn't look like it does on a regular gas powered engine. The whole engine has been pulled out and the power system has been put in its place. Like I said before, it's liquid cooled. You can see that there's a radiator here. You can see that one of the coolant lines comes into the top of it here. You can see there's electric fans on here too to make the coolant bring that heat through the radiator better um, but this whole system right here is basically built on a steel cage and it's called a sled so it has your high voltage low voltage system everything in orange is high voltage power and uh, basically they just take that whole motor out and they put this whole thing in its place it's very neat to see and at the back of this whole sled here is the out drive that connects to the drive line of the vehicle. What do you say we go for a spin and try this thing out? Check out the cool, I didn't bring this up in the first initial uh, mention of the Metrolink options, but check out this cool touch screen here. Instead of having toggle switches for your door entry, your lights, it's all push button and it's all lit up. It's really a cool system. Kind of foolproof, not much to it. I haven't had one or seen, heard of one breaking, so they're pretty cool. Okay, so as we know, the green light's on on this vehicle, so we know it's running right now. So what we'll do is we'll put our seatbelt on and we'll take for a little spin. Now as we drive, Jack has shown you pictures of the of the gauge cluster where the power meter moves from the red and to the green. If you, if you, as we're driving it right now, I got my foot on the gas pedal, but if I let off, I'm not gonna touch the brakes, but you're gonna see what it does. I don't have my foot on either. See how it's slowing down on its own? Regenerative braking. And that, and that energy gets applied back to the batteries to keep the batteries from, uh, or get, makes it more efficient. One thing about an all-electric vehicle is you hear every little rattle when you're driving. 
And that's why we like the Metrolink a little bit better than some other brands is we have noticed that it rides a little quieter than some of the others out there because it's got square tubing framework underneath it. So if you're going to get an electric vehicle, keep that in mind that you want to make sure you're going to get something that rides nice and quiet as you can. Jack, I don't know if you can see that power meter from where you're at, but see it's in the red right now, doing about 30 miles an hour. Now I let off the gas and slow it down on its own. It's going into the green and it's using, recapturing that energy to bring it back to the batteries. Eight hundred foot-pounds of torque this vehicle has, which allows it to get up and go pretty good. We're going up a pretty steep hill, and I'm not full. I'm not full throttle into it, and it's doing really good. Speed bump. I let off the gas. Don't even touch the brakes. You have to have a lot of different feather control with the gas pedal to make this vehicle as efficient as possible. If you got a driver who's just doing a lot of stop go with his brakes and with his foot pedal, flooring it every time. You're gonna not get the range on it you will get if you have someone who's more consistently feathering the throttle control. And there you have it. The latest technology here at Northwest Bus Sales. All electric vehicles, they're, they're here to stay. And this is the first one we've got. We're really excited about it. Um, if you have any questions, you know where to find us. You can send an email or you can uh, drop a note on this uh, YouTube video. Thank you very much for your time, everybody, and I hope you have a good day.